hear the story this morning. An old story, indeed, as all the gospel stories are, they are old. Something we've heard many, many times is sometimes hard to hear. So I invite you to hear the story, this old story told in a translation that I find very useful from time to time, Eugene Peterson's The Message, a storytelling translation of the old story, so that we might hear it anew and with fresh ears. This is the Word of God for the people of God. In the eighth chapter of John, the first 11 verses, the story goes that Jesus went to the Mount of Olives but was soon back in the temple. And swarms of people came to him, so he sat down to teach them. The religious scholars and Pharisees led in a woman who had been caught in the act, in the act of adultery. They stood her in plain sight of everyone and they said, Teacher, this woman was caught red-handed. And the Bible clearly says in Leviticus, that we are to stone such persons. What do you say? See, they were trying to trap Jesus into saying something incriminating so they could bring charges against him. But Jesus, Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger in the dirt. But they kept at him, badgering him, until he straightened up and said, Okay, okay, the sinless one among you, go first. The sinless one among you, he said, throw that stone. Then he bent down again and wrote some more in the dirt. Hearing what he said, they walked away, one after another, beginning with the oldest. The woman was left alone with Jesus, and finally Jesus stood and he spoke to her. He said, woman, where are they? Does no one condemn you? No one. Master, she said. Well, neither do I, said Jesus. Go on your way, and from now on, don't sin. Does no one condemn you? No one, Master. Well, neither do I, said Jesus. Neither do I. Again, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Telling the story. I, I, I have been telling the story, these, these old and familiar stories now for, for over... 50 years. And over those years I have learned many things, but I think perhaps the most important thing I have learned about telling the story is that if you're going to tell good stories, you have to spend most of your time listening to people tell their stories. Because everyone has a story. The problem comes in that sometimes, sometimes when people know that you're listening to them, they, they kind of change what they say. 
So if you really want to find out what a person's really thinking, what they're really, what they're really wanting to say, you almost have to be a little sneaky. You have to find a way to, to, to listen in, to, to hang out where the people are to hear the story. Now, I don't know where you all go around here to hang out. I came in on Poplar. Long, long set of different communities as I came through. I was thinking, well, there's a lot of cars there. Oh, church. There's a, a wide assortment of churches down that, down that road. Some big ones, some little ones. So if Jesus was looking to hear the story, he had a lot of options this morning as he came in on Poplar. He was here. Friday night, if you were here, maybe you saw, he sat right over in here. He left early. But he came to listen for the story. See, I think that probably the most important thing he did before he spoke was to just be with people. To find out where they were and go and watch and listen. So he figured out one of the best places to, to find the people was over, over to the market, over to the supermarket where people had to shop. It's harder and harder to find places where people gather. They tend to gather on social media and in the isolation of a, of a smartphone or a computer and, and, and there's no more of that street scene. So the supermarket though was still one of those places and that's how he ended up one afternoon, watching and listening. He'd figured out if you want to know what people really think, what they value, don't listen to them talk. Watch them shop. See what they actually do with what they've got. In spite of what they say is their important priority, you've got to see how they actually spend their money. So that's why he was there. Just watching and learning. He'd made a mistake though. he he decided to shop later in the afternoon, one afternoon when everyone else had decided to shop. And so there were a lot of people there, and he got stuck in a long line of people at the checkout. And they only had one open. He hated it when they do that. Why do they do that? Big crowd, and they only have one line. Well, they had the, the ten items or less thing, you know, but he had more than that. So now he's stuck. He's stuck behind three ladies who've had carts piled high. And since they were all so waiting, he, as he was watching, they had left their carts and gone over to the magazine rack. One of the ladies had gotten a magazine off the rack. Actually, it wasn't so much a magazine. It was like a kind of a newspaper thing. You know what I'm talking about? They have them there at the checkout lines. You've seen these magazines. Usually has, has pictures of aliens on the front. Or, or John Travolta. Uh, <laughs> who's looking kind of like an alien these days. Yeah. But one of the ladies was reading to her two friends from this magazine. And her two friends were laughing so hard they liked to fall down in the aisle. Well, Jesus thought, humor, humor. He was interested. He was interested in, in what people laughed at, what made people laugh. In fact, he was kind of looking for some new material himself. Oh, yes, he, he had a Samaritan joke that he'd been telling that just was going nowhere. He'd say, he'd say, how many Samaritans does it take to change a light bulb? And the people would say, how many? And Jesus would say, one. If he's good. 
See, see, see? Wasn't quite working for him. You know what I'm saying? Nobody likes people just staring at you going, I don't get that. One, if he's good. What's so funny? One, if he's good. Oh, 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 good Samaritan. Oh, good Samaritan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, don't laugh now. Whereas his disciples are sitting over there in the corner going, hey, hey, what's a light bulb? You know that's why he called them the disciples, don't you? Now that's funny. You're going to use that. I know you will. He knew it would be rude to just go over and ask the ladies what they were laughing at. What was so funny? He knew that would be rude, but he still was curious and he was wondering what it might be that they were reading. So he, 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 he went around the display until he could just, he wanted to see the front of the magazine. Maybe if he could see the cover, he might be able to know what, what was inside. And finally he could see there was the cover of the magazine picture picture of the man that used to be the president of the United States way way back in the last century Bill Clinton some of you are old enough to remember remember yeah. so there's a picture of Bill Clinton on the front of this magazine that they're reading but then he looked a little closer he saw down in the corner there was a little quarter panel a picture of a woman and Jesus could just make out the, the little headline, the name Monica, Monica. It looked like Monica. Well, he didn't know what that was all about. But when he heard those women laughing, he remembered. He remembered because it was the exact same laugh that he had heard years before. Only that time it was a group of men laughing at a woman who they said had been having an affair. And he told the men to hush. He said, y'all just just be quiet. He said, you want to laugh? You want to laugh? Then I'd like the first laugh to come from one of you gentlemen that's never imagined doing something like this yourself. Well, they got quiet. Then they got embarrassed. And then one by one, well, you heard the story, beginning with the oldest. They got up and they laughed. He was alone with her. Finally, he said to her, he said, they're gone. He said, you're going to be okay. They're gone. Then he said, it's time. It's time for you to go too. But then he added, he said, you know, you don't have to live like this anymore. You know this story? We all know this story. And one of the reasons we know this story so well is that one line, that one perhaps most quoted line of the Gospels. The sound bite. Let he who is without sin... You know the line. And you know that story. But as often as I have heard this story, 
as often as I have read it or heard it taught or even preached. Every time I've heard the story, I've always felt, as a storyteller, that there was something wrong. Something wrong with the story. Because this story just stops in the middle. And that's not how a story is supposed to go. We listen to a story to find out what happens. We listen to a story to find out what happens next. And that's the whole point of the story, to build up some tension, some conflict, and then we look for resolution. We want to know how did it all work out. And this story never, never finishes. It just stops. Where did she go? The woman, where did she go? We don't know. And how did that go and sin no more work out for you? That would be interesting. Yes. But we never find out. And those men, those men, can you imagine those men? As they were walking away, Mad? Sure they were mad. Angry that someone had had the nerve to question their Second Amendment right to bear stones. But we don't know. We don't know. The story just stops. But my brothers and sisters, that's how the gospel story works. The old story stops where your story and my story begins. Because we're there. We have been there. This is our story. We've been caught. Lives broken sometimes by forces within and others by forces from outside of us. A time in our life of collapse. Sometimes we call it even the dark night of the soul. We have been there. Sometimes even surrounded by those who would accuse, who would even throw stones. More often than not, however, we have learned, particularly as adults, to keep our secrets and we keep our stories to ourselves. Few, if anyone, knows. And we are alone in our brokenness, imprisoned, surrounded by our own unwillingness to forgive or be forgiven. We've been there. And when you are there, and you will be again, remember this story. Remember that in this story, when all those men were laughing, Jesus did not join them. Jesus took sides. And it wasn't the side of justice. It was the side of mercy. And when those men left, remember when those men left, Jesus did not leave. He stayed with her. Indeed, I do believe, as Paul Harvey used to say, that is the rest of the story, that he stayed with her. From that day on, he was with her, wherever she was, wherever she went. But I would add, he was with them too. The men, as they walked away, they always remembered what had happened. 
and He is with you. With you and me this morning. That is the rest of the story. That indeed is our story. They say she showed up again. The woman, the woman, in the story they say they think it was her that came in one evening while Jesus and his friends were having supper. They say it was her that knelt and bathed his feet with her tears. You can have my heart. It isn't new. It's been bruised and broken. Only comes in blue. been down a long road got dirty on the way if I give it to you will you wash it clean take the stain away you can have my heart if you don't mind broken things You can have my life if you don't mind these tears. I hear you make all things new, so I give these pieces all to you. If you want it, you can have my heart. So beyond repair Nothing I could do Tried to fix it myself But it was only worse When I got through And you walked right into my darkness Speaking words so sweet then you held me like a child till my frozen tears fell down at your feet. You can have my heart if you don't mind broken things. You can have my life if you don't mind these tears. So I give these pieces all to you If you want it, you can have my heart If you want it, you can have my heart This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.